Hey there guys! Today's video is going to be all about theme park visits and bullet journaling and how those two things go together. Uh, if you are new to my channel, hi, my name is Rebecca Ganchi and I do bullet journal and lifestyle stuff. If you found this video first, go ahead and hit that subscribe button um, because I post videos twice a week and I'm sure you'd love them. But let's jump right into it. So we actually live really close to Disneyland, but we don't get to go very often because it's expensive. Um, but I, back several years back, uh, when I was rooming with my sister, before I was married, before I had a kid, any of that, uh, and before I was bullet journaling actually, we did have uh, passes for one year. And since I wasn't in a planner that I was archiving, I don't have what I used to use back then. Um, at that time, the only thing really going on in my life was the Harry Potter fan site that I'm still a member of today, myhogwarts.com, check it out. Um, and so what I was actually using for a planner back then was a sort of self-made cobbled together academic type planner. Um, where I just was using a weekly spread to sort of keep track of my assignments and homework on the site and the different jobs that I had there and things that I was doing there. I um, actually spent a lot of time in the parks like grading homework for the job that I had and like working on homework assignments for my Hogwarts. It was amazing because we lived so close. I would actually go to the parks like twice a week. I got so much value out of it. If I had had a bullet journal back then, I probably would have included more spreads, um, sort of detailing maybe how many times I was visiting so that I could get a, an idea of like what kind of value we were getting out of the money that was spent on the passes, um, maybe probably lists of things that I wanted to do, schedules of different shows that I wanted to catch um, so that I would know like when to schedule my visits, maybe lists of menu items that I wanted to try or um, taking note of like when my favorite attractions that were down for maintenance were going to be reopening, things like that. Um, but I don't have any of that to show you, so unfortunately, we're going to skip forward in time to when I was in my very first bullet journal in my Moleskine. Um, I actually did use this, and I'm going to show you. So this guy was just my everyday planner, um, but I do have one spread in here that's particularly useful. Um, a couple years after that Disney pass, um, at this point I was married, um, and they finally opened the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal Hollywood, and so even though it's a bit of a drive from us, I wanted to go ahead and get the um, Southern California pass, and I wanted to try to get the most out of our pass that we possibly could. And so uh, I basically, I made just this little bit of a future log here, um, that just showed the months that we had the pass. We got the pass, I believe, yeah, Labor Day here, and it was good until the end of February the next year, so it wasn't a full year, um, but it was a really good deal. And so I wanted to make sure I knew when the blackout dates were, so I actually just went ahead and crossed them all out here in pen. You'll see that that's the summer blackout date, here's the Christmas ones, and then in October they had Saturdays blocked out for some reason, but there were actually quite a lot of days available. But um, I want to just kind of keep track of how often we were going. It wasn't that often, but we made it a point to go a few times. Um, and it's just marked here. So I circled the date here. We went on Labor Day. Then I went on October 2nd for an event called Just to the Nine and Three Quarters, which is a lot of fun. I will be telling you more about that in a second. Um, then on October 19th, I went because um, that was the beginning of LeakyCon, which was in LA that year. And so everybody from the convention um, was at the park that day. And so I, um, I went with them. A lot of them were going for like an after hours event that I didn't want to pay an extra ticket for because I already had my pass, but I just went that day. Then we went the next month for my birthday. And then then I moved into a different bullet journal. So I don't think I marked it off, but we did go, I believe, somewhere around the beginning of January. And then I went again on President's Day by myself. So this was just a way for me to keep track of when I was going. Um, you can see here, like I circled the 2nd of January in pencil. I believe that is the day that we ended up going, but I never marked it in pen. But I was kind of planning ahead um, and just looking. I wanted to be able to have this with me without having to pull it up on the internet whenever I wanted to look at my blackout days. Because there's a lot of different tiers and calendars when it comes to Universal. So this is just a great way to keep track of all that. Then this little guy is a tiny little, um, it's a field note size or like a pocket size um, and it's, 
don't even know what's the brand here markings by C.R. Gibson. I think I got it at Walmart or Target. I don't know. But this little notebook um, I actually picked up way back when I was starting to obsess over uh, the original Pottermore. <laughs> and like here I actually copied down the instructions for one of the potions that I was making a lot. Oh my gosh, I was such a nerd. But I hung on to this little notebook because it was useful and it ended up actually being um, useful for me. I was using this for keeping track of a lot of the stuff on my Hogwarts. Um, I was keeping track of like my summer camp Quidditch matches and um, like my dueling record. And then when I started um, refereeing, I would use this to take notes as I was refereeing duels. That's not the point. The point is this little guy, since it was small and convenient, I actually used as my like one day bullet journal for a special event when I went to Dress to the Nine and Three Quarters, which is an annual event. I believe they still do it. It's put on by the LA Dumbledore's Army. So it's a local fan club that gets together and does events. And so they do a lot of events at the parks now. I don't have the pass anymore, so I haven't been in a while, but um, I used this to kind of make the most of that day. Um, so I have here just the um, the timeline of events. So I believe, let me see. I don't even know if this is just when I was planning to be there. I don't think I have in here listed like the actual opening and closing time of the park, but I have, you know, when I pla planned to leave the house, when I planned to arrive. Um, and then everything that's kind of bolded here are the official events and then in between I have the things I wanted to do. I wanted to do the studio tour, I wanted to go on the mummy ride, um, and stuff like that. So that's that's basically all that is. Then on this side I wanted to, um, like my, my plan since I was going by myself was to post one Instagram picture per hour um, to share with all of my friends who, like my online friends, uh, who may want to follow along. So I was kind of keeping track of which um, things like I could take a picture of like, hey, it's lunchtime, so I'll get a shot of my food at lunchtime, for example. Um, and I, I didn't check them all off, so I guess I wasn't paying too much attention. I did end up meeting somebody there who I spent a good chunk of the day with, and so I wasn't pulling this out as much as I otherwise would have if, if I were by myself. Um, but see the next page here I have a packing list so I can remember to bring everything. Um, I really like to pack light when I go to theme parks, especially by myself. So I was wearing um, the dress that I had designed and sewn myself. Um, so it had a giant pocket on one side and then another pocket for my wand. So everything fit in that one big pocket and then I had like a tiny little purse that just had a couple of things. Um, some, you know, yeah, hand sanitizer, lipsticks. I had like three or four different lipsticks on because it was like a retro theme and I was doing this really bold red lip anyway. Then, of course, the checklist of things that I wanted to do that day. Um, I wanted to make sure to ride, you know, the two rides in there. I wanted to try a new spell because they have like the different shop windows um, and you've got your wand. Uh, I wanted to try pumpkin juice because I had tried butterbeer pre previously, but I wanted to try pumpkin juice. I wanted to get a chocolate frog because I was collecting the cards. And then uh, there was the wax seal set that I wanted to get. I wanted to go on the mummy ride because it's my favorite. And I wanted to do the studio tour again because I always wanted to do that like once per visit because things change. And then I didn't get to like the one thing that was just, if I have downtime, I brought some MH homework to work on. Didn't get to that. And then the last page was, hey, let's spend $35 on souvenirs this time. I didn't fill it out. Um, again, I didn't use it as much as I thought I would, but it was helpful for me to plan it out in advance so that I could um, like really go in with a game plan and decide what success looked like to me in order to find like, this is what I want to do today and then aim for that. So Universal Studios is a lot of fun, um, but I was always still pining for Disneyland and I actually recently got a chance to go, uh, just me and my daughter and some friends who know people who used to work in the parks um, got us in for the day. And I wanted to make the most of that one day that we had to see Disney and to show it to my daughter. Um, and so I actually prepped for like the week beforehand when I knew I was gonna go. And instead of bringing my full journal, again, I picked a small little one. This is the, uh, 
Chic Sparrow micro size that I use or did use previously as a wallet. Um, it's like my overflow wallet now for my less used cards, but I use this as my wallet and my planner. Um, and let me show you that. I actually have a setup when I originally bought this um, of like my wallet setup. I got this in last year, no, it's 2017, a second chance sale, and it's a Pemberley Castle Rock um, micro. Chic Sparrow. And so it's got like this card holder in the front. I'm not going to flip through because I think there's cards in here. But then in the very middle, I've got this itty bitty little Moleskeen. Um, it's just the right size for this. And all of these pages are perforated, so I actually have ripped out some of these. But this is what I brought with me to Disney. Um, there were some pages that I filled out um, and then removed when I thought I didn't need them because in order to find it, I don't have a bookmark. I wanted to be able to just flip really quickly to the elastic. And so I kind of pulled out the pages from the middle I wasn't using and redid them. I wasn't planning to do this video or I would have saved them. Um, is any of this important? No, these are just to-do lists. Um, so this is what I have left over <laughs> that I saved. And my thought was, I've got me and I've got the baby and let's take um, just like lists of everything that I can do with her, you know, that doesn't have like a height requirement. So these are things that we can do while it's daytime. These are things we could do anytime or specifically like maybe when it's really hot or whatever, indoor, outdoor. And then these are things that we can, like I can do while she's napping. I could go on the train while she's napping or I can go like on Pirates or the Haunted Mansion. She probably wouldn't enjoy the Haunted Mansion if she was awake. Um, but if she was asleep, it would be fine. Or, you know, cause I was, I had her in the carrier, so I could have just carried her around, um, on me asleep and pirates is my favorite. Um, so I ended up doing some of these by myself, um, and others with the group. We did get to do the tiki room. She loved small world. And I definitely wanted to make sure that everything here that's awake stuff that she could see herself. So it was mostly just a list of ideas. Um, and not everything we got to, but I think she really enjoyed her time, especially towards the end. Um, Small World, I think, was her favorite thing. Actually, you know what? Her favorite thing was the parade on the way out. It was so cute. She was 11 months when we went, um, and she just had such a fun time watching the spectacle and all the princesses waving at the cute baby. So that is what I brought with me to Disney. It was super useful. I um, had, you know, my ticket and my credit card and everything in here. And all I had to worry about was this um, and the key to the car, which was, I think, a separate. I pulled it off. So it was just this and the key and my phone. And then I think maybe I brought my power bank. I don't remember. But I like to pack really light um, for myself, at least. <laughs> Obviously, there's other stuff that's in the baby's bag. But I just don't want to have to lug around huge bags, giant notebooks that I'd be pulling in and out. Not going to happen. But this is small enough that I can actually pull it out and take a look at my list um, while I'm waiting in line, while I'm walking somewhere in the park and not um, feel like it's like this whole burdensome thing. It's actually going to get used if it's small. So hopefully you found that useful and gave you some ideas for planning your upcoming trip to any theme park. Um, some other spread ideas that you might want to incorporate into either your everyday planner or whatever you're planning to bring with you into the park. Um, packing lists, obviously, for your trip and for actually going into the park. Um, shopping lists for any kind of souvenirs you want to get, any kind of food you want to try. Um, definitely lists of photos that you want to take, rides that you want to go on, schedules for um, different events and shows that you want to see. And then obviously if your theme park visit is part of a wider vacation, there's all kinds of vacation spreads that you can incorporate. Whether you want to just bring a small little portable planner to use and include all your flight details and hotel booking information and travel details in that or you know, use just your normal planner to plan that as you normally would. I think the versatility of the bullet journal system, being able to use something really small and portable, being able to customize it to whatever you want and include all kinds of lists, uh, co it goes really well with the idea of 
just getting the most out of your theme park day that you possibly can. Um, for the kind of person, if you're like me, that you like to plan all of the details in advance so that you can get the most out of every minute, uh, the bullet journal is a great way to do that uh, and just make the most of your vacation. So enjoy your upcoming theme park visit if you have one planned. Uh, if not, dream along with me of that day when maybe the prices will go down a little bit. That's not gonna happen in any case. I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done that. And I will see you in the next one on Thursday. Bye.